Welcome to the ninth annual Minnesota Neuromodulation Symposium. Uh, welcome back. It's been three years since we've seen many of you guys in person, so we're really happy to have you. Uh, of course, COVID's not over, so remember, you know, do as much social distancing, wear your mask if you're comfortable with that, uh, if that makes you more comfortable. But uh, we're really glad to see you guys in person, and I think the energy is going to be great here, and I'm so excited to have everybody here. Um, I, of course, want to first acknowledge all of our sponsors that have sponsored this conference. Uh, uh, we have sponsors from the University of Minnesota, so the Institute of Engineering and Medicine. We have uh, Institute of Translational Neuroscience and MinDrive Brain Conditions, as well as Medtronic and Inspire as our um, as our diamond level sponsors and our platinum level sponsors are Abbott and Surtech. And so I want to remind you, they've sponsored us to make this conference happen. Uh, all they're asking is for some time with you at the table. So spend some time at the tables, at the social and at the breaks and actually say hi and, and uh, make them feel that they've been welcomed. Um, so let's see. I also want to remind you that there is, uh, I need some more poster judges. Uh, we had some people who posters, uh, judges that had to not be here tomorrow. So if you are interested in poster judging, please let me know because we're a little bit desperate. But we have eight, 91 posters uh, and, uh, you know, we want all those poster presenters to feel that they were heard and, and you know, there were people attending them. So poster judging is a great way to do that. So uh, we have our... Uh, Chairs this year are Alec Widge and Ben Hayden, and the, uh, the focus of this year is neuromodulation in the neuropsychiatric space, which I'm excited to hear about, and I think we have an excellent lineup. One last thing, there's, the, of course, the Voice of the Community session this afternoon, and then we're going to have a social afterwards. There are drink tickets inside your uh, name tag, so in between, there's two name tags, but in between there's a drink ticket that will get you either a beer or a wine just to kick things off, or a soda if you don't do that. So um, please, uh, you know, join us and be here for the social this afternoon. So, Alec, I'll let you do the introduction. Introductions. All right, it's going to be a brief introduction because I think I'd rather hear what he has to say, but it is my pleasure to kick us off by introducing Dr. Jacob Toller, Dean of our medical school, by training pediatric hematologist, oncologist, and researcher in rare genetic diseases, but relevant to us, one of the architects and shepherds of our MinDrive Brain Conditions Initiative, which is our multi-million dollar state initiative to build well, technologies for repairing the brain, which is what we're going to spend the rest of the, rest of the next two days hearing about. So with that, Dr. Tola, thank you for being with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Rich. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It is truly a delight to be here because uh, what uh, Dr. Rich didn't say, I have uh, had a lab for uh, three decades now, and uh, uh, interest in basic science is actually what brought me to medicine. And a part of my, I'm a bone marrow transplant dad by, uh, by day job, and part of my research has been, and clinical translation has been, in uh, neurodegeneration that's genetic in origin. So I specialize in adrenal leukodystrophy, metachromatic leukodystrophy, globoid leukodystrophy, and some of the other ones. And I've always been intrigued by the neuromodulation. And uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the ninth annual neuromodulation symposium that again has been brought to you by MinDrive from and by Institute of Engineering and Medicine. The agenda is beautiful. The agenda is, I'll stay as long as I can. Uh, but as I, as I looked at uh, the you know, organized field, I think of the Neuromodulation Society was in 1989, which is uh, just about when I was graduating from medical school. So it cannot be that far uh, in the history. And, um, uh, and it, it, it produced enormous, enormous advancements. But when I look at the deeper history, if I can, maybe I should do this. Uh, so this is just, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, whoever is helping me. Uh, See, you know, people thought of what you are thinking already in, in the 4th century B.C. You know, the Greeks thought that if you put an 
on, on, on top of somebody's head, and uh, you can perhaps influence the headache, the migraines, and the uh, Egyptians and part of the Mediterranean lake thought that if you use the electric rays and put them at the side of pain, which would be arthritic pain in the ankle or gout in the, uh, in the, in the foot, you can improve things in, in that fashion. Click. Magic. Oh, it happens. So we got a little better with the source of electricity. This, uh, the famous Galvani uh, frogs and you know how that uh, came about. If you are uh, if you are free for a couple of hours, I would recommend that you uh, that oh they don't hear me. They just, oh oh okay well <laughs> I'm just doing this is one of my artistic thespian kind of maneuvers. No, it's not. Um, the, uh, Ken Burns, you know, just, uh, just uh, last weekend, I think, uh, made public one of his documentaries, and uh, I'm a great admirer of some of his other work, but this one is on the most famous American history of the 18th century, which would be Benjamin Franklin, who, as you would probably recall, has done some experimentation in uh, electricity. So we have gotten a little further, you know, on this, and uh, uh, we re made some, some space between these phrenology masks, that, uh, that these, these heads that, that were uh, attempted to treat uh, headaches and, and, and so forth. And if you go with click, magic, yes, uh, the, the, the structure function has always been uh, a, a, a terrific, I think, uh, discovery. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure when one would place this, but it certainly has been the masterpiece of the, from Francis Bacon through the 18th and 17th century. But preceding that, there have been several episodes in, in Japan, there's the middle panel, uh, and uh, Nicodemus of Emesa, you know, was, the, was uh, on the, it's the fourth century uh, after, uh, 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 of this, uh, 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 of the first millennium, uh, where the first dissection has been possible. And I was always uh, amazed, you know, how challenging it is to define a unit of function in brain as, as a circuit, as we know now, uh, rather than something that's more, uh, that's more axial or in other symmetry, like skin or liver or muscle, for that matter. And one of the masters, of course, of that has been Leonardo da Vinci. This is from his notebooks uh, that I think was one of the first people who have uh, been able to suggest that there is a collective brain and that the information that is in this room is not sitting in uh, any single brain, but rather is being distributed much like in the brain uh, among uh, all of us. Click. And then uh, the Ramon and Cajal, you know, those of you who have been here for several years, uh, I think it was about three, four years ago that the Weissman had an exhibit. Uh, Dr. Rich is nodding, so he probably said, this is just amazing. You know, I, I, I look at somebody who his father told him, uh, you cannot be a painter because it makes no money. You have to be a doctor. And he, in sort of a, a Richard Seltzer way, you know, turns around, you know, the, the whole life and then creates these masterful images of uh, cells. You know, this one, as people will recognize, uh, there's going to be a linguistic test right now. How do you pronounce the name of this cell? Anyone? Yeah, it is that one, but, you know, it, my, 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 it's a small nation, you know, nobody knows what it is. You know, it's called Czech Republic. Purkinje is really uh, the person who, who discovered them first, and they are named after him. Click. So the idea here is to uh, really move uh, in, that, in that maze of what science is, and as, uh, as I would suggest, science is not the data. Science is not the tables and Excel sheets. Science is a mindset. Science is a way we look uh, inside and outside of us and try to understand how things work. And we do this in a tentative way, in a, 
in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that we are sort of building the experimentation of the structural functional relationship and then look around, you know, how this works and then iterate and change and, and discard things that don't. So it's a mindset, it's a way of how I think even this society today would, uh, outside of the scientific halls, would benefit from uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that humility uh, of thought, assertive humility, com competent humility, but humility nevertheless. So you look at uh, deep brain stimulation, which has to be, uh, I think, you know, one of the examples of how we can incorporate some of the devices that we, that we have uh, gotten to know and the extension of the pacemakers that have been done here in this city uh, almost half, a, more than half a century ago uh, in heart and then were adapted in a slightly different way for, for brain. So the degree simulation has been designed for pain and then only after that, you know, it was uh, found that this uh, actually can work for uh, Parkinson's disease and as many of you work on this, you know, now uh, we are expanding this further to the obsessive compulsive disorder, to memory loss, uh, to depression, perhaps addiction even, uh, and, and that's so exciting because it's like the Alice in Wonderland kind of house that you open one door, you don't know what's behind it, whether there are going to be three doors or one, and what's going to be, be behind that, and this is the, uh, the, the uh, another uh, concept that I learned quite a bit from, which is the Stuart Kaufman's Santa Fe Institute, uh, analogy of uh, the catalytic snap, you know, that you need a critical mass of circumstances uh, uh, before, and he, he was explaining the macromolecule evolution in this, but, but it works, I think, in the epistemic gain of knowledge as well as it does in these, in these instances. So I'm delighted to have you all here today. I am deeply grateful to people who have organized this, and uh, I wish you the best. And welcome.